a virus-sapping robot has entered the fray in the fight against Ebola, potentially stopping future outbreaks in their tracks. We'll tell you more about the machine's role in this battle and what it means for the future of viral disease prevention this week on Light Matters. This is Light Matters for December 10th, 2014. I'm James Lowe. And I'm Justine Murphy. Today, we'll show you how UV pulses could help stop the spread of the Ebola virus. But first, we'll introduce you to some of the finalists for this year's PRISM Awards and share some of the week's most interesting research news. A modified street camera is fast enough to capture the movement of a single laser pulse in real time. A team at Washington University in St. Louis has developed a 2D street camera capable of imaging events at up to 100 billion frames per second, enabling temporal resolution in tens of picoseconds. They used the device to make a slow motion movie of a pulse refracting at the interface between two media, two different pulses racing in different media, and to study the lifetime of a fluorophore used in bioimaging. The Washington University device is about four orders of magnitude faster than the fastest CCD and CMOS systems. The street camera features a wider aperture than most street cameras to allow 2D imaging, and a pair of electrodes that cause different parts of the signal to hit the sensor at different times. The setup also features a digital mirror device to encode the information. Lead investigator Dr. Li Hong Wang said he thinks the technique, called compressed ultrafast photography, will enable discoveries that haven't even been thought up yet. The research was published in Nature. The nanoscale features on the surface of Blu-ray discs are nearly optimized for absorbing sunlight, according to researchers from Northwestern University. Although originally developed to optimize data compression and error tolerance, the quasi-random arrangement of islands and pits can be duplicated on polymer solar cells. The researchers said Blu-ray patterns led to more effective light absorption than random patterns or no patterns at all. And it doesn't even matter what's on the disk. Eternal sunshine of the spotless mind absorbs just as well as Sanford and Son. The overall broadband absorption enhancement of a Blu-ray pattern solar cell was measured at 21.8%. In addition to polymer cells, the patterns could be applied to other forms of solar panels as well. The research was published in Nature Communications. Still ahead, we'll show you how lasers can test the ripeness of fruit and how UV radiation can help fight Ebola, plus a preview of the 2015 PRISM Awards. After the show, check out the expanded resources for students, educators, and everyone at edu.photonics.com. It's just nine weeks until Photonics West, and each week until then, Light Matters will be bringing you short profiles of the finalists for the PRISM Awards, presented every year at the big show by Photonics Media and SPIE. The PRISM Awards recognize innovative light-based technology products that solve problems and improve quality of life. This year, there are nine award categories with three finalist products in each. This week, we'll take a look at the additive manufacturing finalists, Femtoprint, Print Optical Technology from LuxXL, and Lithoprof 3D from Multiphoton Optics. Femtoprint is offered by a Swiss company of the same name. The tabletop 3D printing system produces glass microsystems such as optical waveguides with nanoscale features using an ultra-fast, low-powered femtosecond laser. Print optical technology from Lux XL in the Netherlands allows prototyping and series 3D printing of lenses and other optical components, primarily for the LED lighting industry. The components are made with a photopolymer solidified by UV light. Lithoprof 3D comes from Multiphoton Optics of Germany. The company supplies laser lithography equipment and a process that automates precision optoelectronics assembly. Tune in next week to learn about the finalists in the biomedical instrumentation category. You can also find out more at photonicsprismawards.com. To tell when an apple is ripe, you could just bite into it. Or you could measure the ethylene gas that it gives off. Or perhaps easiest of all, you could shoot it with a laser. A team from St. Joseph University in Lebanon and the University of Western Brittany in France has developed a laser biospeckle technique that non-invasively detects the peak ripeness of climacteric fruits, a group that also includes bananas, pears, melons, and tomatoes. The technique could someday be used to determine the best time to harvest. In a study published in Applied Optics, the researchers recorded the speckle pattern created by a laser when shown on a piece of fruit. The light scattering properties of fruit change over time as the fruit's glucose content increases, meaning the speckle grains will be larger when it's not ripe and smaller when it is. Most ripeness tests used today are either destructive or based on often misleading visual criteria, so the laser method could be the apple of an orchard owner's eye. 
The Ebola virus has claimed more than 6,000 lives in West Africa. But an ultraviolet disinfection system already in use in the U.S. could soon play an active role in preventing the disease's spread. Based on a UV flash lamp setup used in the past to combat airborne tuberculosis, Xenex's germ-zapping robot system was recently added to the disaster preparedness arsenal at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, the destination for many military personnel returning from outbreak management operations overseas. Xenex founder Dr. Mark Stibich said several institutions have contacted his company in recent months, saying they'd like to have the system in preparation for potential exposure to patients with Ebola or a future superbug. Stivich said Xenex is prepared to send systems overseas for use by relief organizations and governmental agencies. The system works by pulsing xenon, a non-toxic inert gas, at high intensity to produce shortwave ultraviolet, or UVC, flashes. Such bursts of light penetrate the cell walls of microorganisms and fuse their DNA so they are unable to reproduce or mutate. This effectively kills pathogens on surfaces and in the air without contact or the use of chemicals. The system is effective against C. diff, MRSA, and norovirus, as well as enveloped viruses like Ebola. The system takes about five to 10 minutes to disinfect a typical hospital patient's room and has been able to cover as many as 62 rooms in a 24-hour period. That's it for this week's show. We hope you'll let us know what you think of Light Matters in the comments section below this video. You can also show the love by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.